Hello, all you lovely people. Welcome to another Enhanced Edition. It has been a while, mostly because the prep time and stuff for this takes a bit more time and also requires me to actually do some customizing or something to that effect. So uh, I just kind of haven't taken the time, been too lazy, been too busy, however you want to look at it, to do any kind of Enhanced Edition stuff. But as you can plainly see and probably knew when you clicked on the video, because it's going to be the title of the video, I went and did it. I actually went and painted Transformers Prime War Breakdown. And I was terrified when I started this project because it's War Breakdown. A figure for, from what I understand, a fairly popular character from the show that was never released in the U.S., but yeah, just in case you all don't remember, there's the video that I originally did for Breakdown here, where he had absolutely no paint on him. Well, I can't say absolutely no paint. He was just factory. He didn't have any additional paint. He had no stickers because when I bought this guy, the only way I was able to get him for less than 200 bucks is to get one that did not have stickers and did not come with his arms Micron. So he doesn't have his hammer, didn't have stickers, so he was very plain looking. Still a cool figure, but very plain. Definitely needed some color. So obviously I went and did it. And as I said, I was terrified to do it. And I definitely think that I could have done a little bit better of a job in places. Probably tried a few different things here and there. I still need to improve my technique. I still need to probably get a bit more in terms of color options in my uh, in my palette, so to speak. But I think even with all of that in mind, the added bits of color make a massive difference. I mean, I feel like you could probably tell right from the jump how this has changed the vehicle mode because, I mean, look at it. It's actually got color. It's not just blue. Starting from, well, let's start from the front. I did some little, like, it's just a bunch of little details throughout, but uh, I did some red on the front here, white there, yellow for the lights there. Now, these lights, they're actually not a solid light. They're actually uh, two smaller lights within it, but this figure is not molded with the two smaller circles inside this vaguely triangular shape, so I just made it one solid light and then got the three smaller lights on the side on each side there on the top i did some panel lining in these crevices here and here i didn't do anything to these because two of them actually go straight through so i didn't want to chance anything there but i did paint this little uh snorkel stack thing silver now i actually used reference photos for this I did use reference photos for the vehicle mode for multiple angles, as well as a reference photo for the robot mode. Thing is, the molding on this, the vehicle mode is actually molded almost 100% show accurate, almost. Like there are obviously some differences here and there, but for the most part, the vehicle mode is actually pretty spot on in its molding. The robot mode, not so much. I had to take liberties, and I took liberties here as well, um, both because I didn't want to get overzealous with it and, you know, risk doing something that I would completely screw up the toy, and also because I feel like what I've got here is just riding the line of being too busy. It's just a lot of little things. The silver bits, I feel like, blend in more, but, like, the yellow and the white and the red, I feel like if I had done too much more, it would have just started to look like too much. Anyway, to move on, I also did white for the little lights up here. Did, this was the most annoying and scary part, was doing the silver trim around the windows. And you can see I did not get it perfect, but I was freehanding it and it was just getting kind of scary. And also found out the hard way, <laughs> On, you can kind of see it on this window here, right along here. Sometimes if I do kind of like a little bit of overpaint, I'll go in with enamel thinner once the paint starts to dry and just kind of paint away the bits that went over. These bits here, like from here down around to here, this whole section here is actually translucent plastic that's been painted. And 
going in with the enamel thinner, I was actually starting to pull up blue paint. So I had to be very careful when it came to uh, addressing the over the sloppiness on the uh, <laughs> the bits on these sections here. So that was a bit harrowing. Uh, also, I probably should have gone in here and done a little bit of black with silver trim to make it look like the windows continuing all the way through, but I do not trust my skills enough to be able to pull something like that off, especially because this is not molded like a window with trim. It's just like a triangular shape that's popping out. Because here, at least, the windows are set in a little bit from the trim, so like because of the three-dimensionality of it, it was a little bit easier to go in there and like kind of follow along that line. But uh, yeah, couldn't do that here. I also did silver for the door handles on both sides and these little vent things. Silver for the little handle thing back there. I also painted the other windows. These windows here on both sides were just blue. So I went in and painted them black and then did the silver detailing, which definitely I think helps to bring those out and make them obviously read as windows. And I also did those as silver. And you can probably tell and could probably tell, I also went and painted the rims on all of the tires, including the one on the back, silver. And that pops so great. I really love that. I was tempted to do these little bars along the top here in silver, because, you know, according to the reference photo, it looked like they were probably either silver or gray. But I kind of thought that that would make things a little too busy. So instead, I just did a little bit of panel lining right up at the top there. Now that back window I painted in and did the silver trim on, and that is a lot sloppier than the other stuff. I was able to clean it up a little bit, but it's still not great. Keep in mind, I'm freehanding it. Uh, this, I painted this little bit, this little raised bit around this little port here red, primarily for the robot mode. And it's, it's a really small, insignificant thing in the grand scheme of things, but uh, we'll see that more in robot mode. And then... Uh, these bits here going around the tire are actually supposed to be fully silver or gray, but because of the fact that they're right up against that tire, and I believe actually molded into it, I don't know for sure, but uh, because they're right up against it and I didn't want to risk getting silver on the tire trying to get up to the edge there, I only painted these little raised bits on the side silver, which I feel like it still gets the point across. Like, yeah, this is blue and it could definitely be color differently to kind of pop out more but I feel like this is a decent way to kind of show that these are you know separate color wise from the rest of the body of the truck without risking painting over the tire and on the back I was tempted to do the entire back bumper here in silver but I opted not to because the front bumper is actually gray and I do not have gray so I didn't want to try and match the color or anything like that. And I thought if the rear bumper was silver and the front bumper was gray, that would kind of be not great. So I just opted to leave it the blank blue. But I did paint in the taillights and also the little trailer hitch and the exhaust pipe there. So yeah, that is... Oh, also I did... Sorry. <laughs> also did the little uh, lights above the wheel wells on both sides there. And I also painted this little, I think this is like yet another mirror, maybe. But uh, yeah, painted that as well. As I said, I was using reference photos from the show, but uh, only had a few to work off of. But I think overall, this turned out pretty great. Not the cleanest job. And I know I could have probably done more or possibly should have stuck with less, but I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. With that said, this is where it all really comes together for me. And I actually started with the robot mode first. I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad I did. I think, because uh, it gave me a better idea of what would probably be better left alone in vehicle mode. And conversely, there are things that I painted in vehicle mode that actually ended up helping the robot mode in minor ways. So it all ended up working out really great. But yeah, this is. I feel like I'm so full of myself to say this, but this looks so much better than he was looking before. It was so plain, so much plain plastic. And this separates things out just the right amount. Now there are a couple of elements that I painted blue. Um, I don't have a blue that's even remotely close to this shade, but 
they're in kind of out of the way places and I feel like even though the shade's not quite right, it still works based on where they are. That's these bands down here at the feet and then these little blue triangles in the shoulders, which we'll see in greater detail when I bring them closer. But uh, yeah, I did some blue there, then silver on the insides of the calves, these knees, this whole calf section is entirely blue. So the silver down here and the silver for the knees is stuff that I painted in. I also did some uh, silver on the inner thighs. Again, just reference photos. You don't even really see it, but I don't know. I don't mind the fact that it's there. I'll get to the pelvis in a minute because I'm actually the most proud of how the pelvis turned out. I don't care how that sounds. The uh, shoulders, some nice details up there. And then these are some of the elements I was talking about with the uh, vehicle mode coming through in the robot mode where it's not much, but this little bit of silver in the forearm and there's little spots of white up there. I feel like it just adds a little bit more to this section of the arm to make it really pop more. I could have gone in and done these joints because those could definitely use some color. Those were, according to the reference photos, in need of being color colored either like silver or gold or something like that. But I don't trust myself enough to pull off something that intricate. And there's also so much junk right around here that I just was like, no, I'll leave it, I'll leave it blue. Getting a closer look down here, you can see the blue that I painted on the feet, the silver on the insides here. I probably should have done this part in black, but whatever, not gonna undo it now. And the silver for the kneecaps, I really like how that looks so much better than the stock blue that it was. You can see the uh, inner thighs there in a little bit more detail. I also really like how the shoulders turned out. There you can see the little blue triangle and a little bit of silver in there. And I need to I need to clean that up, <laughs> that little line there. But uh, yeah, you got a tiny bit of silver there. I kind of left some of the gray plastic intact to help it kind of blend in with the other gray plastic throughout the figure. But I did a little bit of silver along the edges here, some panel lining there, and then gold and silver here, and this big, big angled bit in silver as well. And I think that works really well given what I had to work with because the sculpt on those shoulders, like the shoulders in particular, these are not show accurate. They're close. Like these bits are fine, but like this stuff right in here, particularly the way this kind of squared off section right here is shaped is wrong. I mean, I don't think that they could have actually done it in a physical form, but yeah, it's. Uh, I had to improvise. I had to kind of take liberties. And I think what I did works pretty well. Like I said, I didn't want to completely, uh, like I didn't want to completely overpaint everything. I didn't want to do too much. I just wanted to add little enhancements here and there to kind of pull the look together. And then uh, as far as like painted car stuff, there's, you know, the little silver thing up there, which I think looks good. And here is that little red bit that I painted. And it's hard to see here, particularly with the red backdrop, but going off of the reference photos that I was using, he had this like little red light up here, which I think was part of his gun that was shoulder mounted, but I kind of put that up there to sort of loosely indicate that little red light that was over his shoulder. The head is unchanged, still a wonderful breakdown head. And now the pelvis, which as I said, I am most proud of. <laughs> And I still don't care how that sounds. I actually took his waist assembly apart in order to paint this, in order to uh, you know try and make sure at all. I didn't like risk getting paint where I didn't want to get paint. And yeah, I did this whole side in silver and then left some of the gray plastic intact, but then also did little bits of silver in here, a little bit of silver right there. And then I also painted this bit black to kind of pull the color of the torso and like to kind of bring it together because this whole piece originally is this shade and uh oh and also did a little bit of panel lining inside those bits there and i know this is i believe supposed to be his front bumper because going by the uh these bits here i feel like those are meant to be those lights those tiny red lights on the front bumper and these are supposed to be like the main kind of side headlights on the bumper but the color changes. The shape changes in a way that would be like physically impossible to do on 
a toy this size that I mean, I feel like even if it was a masterpiece, it probably wouldn't be able to pull that trick off. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I like the way that this came together. And this was actually the first piece I did and kind of set the tone for the rest of the work I was doing, which was to try and keep some of the stock colors intact to help to kind of make everything seem a little bit more cohesive, I feel. And that's at least what I was going for. Whether or not I was successful, um, well, I feel like I was, but your thoughts may vary. Overall, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. It was terrifying, like I said, but I am very happy with how this turned out. And as is usually the case with any of the Reaper label stuff or custom work that's been done on the Enhanced Edition videos in the past, it's, it's little things that add up to what I feel is a lot. It's the kind of thing where I feel like if you're looking at this guy without knowing what he used to look like before, which, uh, there you go. If you look at them side by side like that, you can see just how drastic a difference this paint has made. But like, if you're looking at them just like this, it doesn't necessarily look like anything's really all that different, but that works for me. Anyway, that's gonna be it for my look at the uh, painted up prime breakdown. What do you all think? Are there any details that you think I should have added? Are there any details that you think I shouldn't have added? Are there any techniques that you would suggest I employ for customs in the future, like different types of paints or different types of application techniques? Because this is pretty much just straight up test stores, uh, enamel model paint, and uh, just doing like, you know, even kind of strokes along the, uh, the surface and then waiting for it to dry and then doing another coat if necessary to kind of get the streaks out. And that's about it, like nothing fancy. I know that there's some techniques that involve watering down acrylic paint and using that in layers, but I don't have acrylic paints. I've been using enamel paints. Should I try and go in and do a little bit of uh, enhancements to the other prime figures that I have? Uh, I, I have done a little bit on Starscream. If any of you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen me post this uh, the last... Well, I want to say last couple of days as of this recording, but by the time this video goes up, who knows? But uh, semi-recently, by the time this video goes up, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I took the uh, Transformers Prime First Edition Starscream and did some enhancements on that. It's small stuff. Mostly I went in with a uh, red Sharpie to color his head crest and then tried to do like his missiles and the fins on his legs and stuff like that. And then I realized that... Uh, Sharpie sometimes takes a while to dry, and I'm actually still waiting for it to dry. But you know what? Starscream is more or less within arm's reach, so let's let's bring him in here. Let's bring let's bring in Starscream, so you can see a little bit of the uh, changes that I've made. Some of them still drying, <laughs> but uh, it's just little bits of red. But I feel like it makes him look a little bit more complete. The red on the head crest definite improvement in my mind also painted up not painted i sharpied up his uh missiles in red left the backs uh, gray because that's how they are in the show uh these are still a little tacky though so I'm gonna give it another couple of days before i really try to put them back on the shelf and touch those but the head crest seems to have dried and then I just did some minor stuff like the, the red on the backs of the fins here and the red on the heels this is actually paint I didn't want to go in with a Sharpie because I didn't think it would uh, overlay the dark gray that well, but worked fine up here. It actually dried faster up here. <laughs> so aside from Breakdown and Starscream, I haven't really done any enhancements to any of my other Prime figures yet, but now I'm kind of thinking about it. This video has gone on long enough, but I'm just uh, I'm curious what y'all think. I'm hoping that this isn't a huge disappointment or any kind of sacrilege to anybody to see that uh, Breakdown has been painted. And I'm also hoping that uh, it's not too terrible a job here. But whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And while you're at it, also feel free to like, subscribe, or if you're feeling generous, you can buy me a coffee. Any of those things will make me a happy Rob. But in the meantime, you all stay fabulous.